Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Today we will discuss uh, another ergonomic assessment tool uh, as a series of uh, discussions on ergonomic assessment tools. And this tool relates to uh, assessment or uh, survey of work related musculoskeletal disorders. And the tool is Nordic Musculoskeletal Questionnaire. The questionnaire consists of structured, forced, binary or multiple choice variants and can be used as self-administered questionnaire or in interviews. So most of the responses in this questionnaire are binary. A few questions have three options, but most of the questions are binary. They have two options and the person filling the questionnaire has to take one of those two options. So this questionnaire can be filled by the uh, worker himself or the person who is uh, uh, assessing the situation, assessing the task can uh, perform interviews and he or she can uh, fill this questionnaire. The standardized questionnaire was designed to answer the question, do musculoskeletal troubles occur in a given population? That is the first. And if so, in what parts of the body are they localized? So this, this is the question that the standardized questionnaire answers. There are different uh, variants of the standardized questionnaire as well. So you can find them uh, from literature as well. The human body is divided into nine anatomical regions. And we will uh, see what those regions are. Total nine anatomical regions. These regions were selected on the basis of two criteria. Regions where symptoms tend to accumulate and regions which are distinguishable from each other, both by the respondent and a health uh, surveyor. So generally there are some major portions of the body, some joints where actually uh, the symptoms of some musculoskeletal uh, uh, problem uh, accumulate or where the pain is felt. And Second, that uh, second important factor is, of course, the validity of the questionnaire. So it should be easy to understand and easy to fill. So the parts, the nine parts that are selected are easy to differentiate from each other so that ultimately the question is clear uh, to the person uh, who is being asked the question and it is easy to fill the questionnaire. So there are three sets of questions in, in this questionnaire. Before those questions are discussed, of course, there is some basic information that needs to be filled, the name of the person being surveyed, uh, gender, job title, uh, age, experience, and so on. And the first uh, question is, have you at any time during the last 12 months had trouble, ache, pain, or discomfort in? So you can see there are nine body parts, neck, shoulder, elbow, wrist and hand, upper back, lower back, one or both hips and thighs, one or both knees, and one or both. And most of the questions, have binary answers in the form of yes, no. So have you at any time during the 12 months had trouble, uh, ache, pain, discomfort in neck? So answer could be no or yes. For shoulder, it could be yes in right shoulder, yes in left shoulder, yes in both shoulders. So if the answer is yes, it could be any one of these. Of course, if the answer is no, then that will be simply take. Regarding elbow, if the answer is no, that is okay. If the answer is yes, if there are three possibilities. Yes, in the right elbow, in the left elbow, or in both elbows. Same is for wrist and hand. And for upper back, low back, 
uh, <clears throat> for thighs and hips, knees and ankles and feet? Uh, the answer is either no or yes. No, uh, now if the answer to any of these uh, question is yes, the next question asked is, have you at any time during the last 12 months been prevented from doing your normal at home or away from home because of the trouble? So here all answers actually related to all nine body parts are binary. So in the form of no and yes. And the third question is, and again, this question also is to be answered to by the one who, who had the trouble. So have you had trouble at any time during last seven days? So again, all answers uh, related to all nine body parts are binary in the form of yes. No. And you could see that these body parts, although very obvious, are also shown with the help of a figure. So the purpose of adding such figures as we saw in the case of Rula and Reba and Ovas as well, is to increase the validity of the questionnaire. That is, the questionnaire is uh, easy to understand and fill. Of course, the structure of this question could be even better than I have shown here. And uh, this, va this validity is specifically called face validity. That is, question is the questionnaire is easy to understand, easy to comprehend, and easy to fill. So, of course, the face validity regarding arrangement of the questions could be better than the one that is shown, but the purpose of having questions side by side is to, again, make it easy to fill. For example, if we had these questions, uh, these, these last two questions below this question, then of course it would be uh, difficult to fill this question here. So now it is easy because if the yes is ticked here, then the person has to uh, uh, take any of uh, these. If the uh, answer is no for the first question, then of course you can see in parallel that these questions uh, have not to be filled. So somewhere in the discussion on ergonomic assessment methods or ergonomic research methods, we will discuss uh, the types of validity in some detail. So if uh, a number of workers are surveyed, so we can see of answers. So for example, for worker number one, we can see that so he is having problem in, for example, take care means that there is problem. So he's having problem in neck, shoulder and so on, but not having uh, ache or discomfort in upper back, so you can see for other workers as well. So we can make a summary of the responses in this case. Now, as you saw that the questions are having binary answers. So the variable here is categorical or qualitative variable. So in, in order to analyze the data that we obtain in this format can be presented using the statistical tools for categorical data that we have already studied in your statistics course. So for example, we can use simply percentage or numbers to show the results of such survey. So for example, in this case, see that 35 uh, out of 1,439 uh, people, 35.2% had some, some trouble with the neck during the last 12 months. And you can see for other body parts. So this population of 1,439 employees uh, during the last 12 months had most trouble uh, in their shoulders and lower back. So these two body parts are having the highest percentage and you can see for the other body parts as well. As you may recall, we can also use bar charts to show the results of uh, such surveys. So in this case, we surveyed 1,020 employees and uh, out of those 48% uh, had problem with their shoulders during the last 12 month uh, period. 42% had problem with their lower, uh, lower back and so on. So you can see that uh, these problems are arranged in, in ascending order from, from the lowest to the highest 
So this is another way to show the results using a Nordic musculoskeletal questionnaire. Of course, you could use a pie chart as well, but pie chart in general is uh, difficult to read if there are many variables involved. So it's better to use pie chart, a percentage, or you, know, you can use side-by-side uh, -side tables as well. These are the descriptive tools. We can also use inferential statistics. So this is the same uh, example as was there. The data is the same as was there in example one. So you can see that in this case, uh, we are having this percentage of people having problem in different body parts. So that is descriptive statistics. But in addition to that, we know that there are two types of uh, workers in this population. Some are operating horizontal loom and other are operating a vertical loom. So if you may recall that if we are having two categorical variables, then we can use chi-square analysis to, to infer information from the population. So we can see that there is a significant difference in the neck pain between two types of uh, operators because p-value is less than 5%. Same is true for, uh, for the upper back, p-value is less than 5% and you can see for, uh, for knees as well. So wherever we are having p-value less than 5%, that is showing that the difference in pain in that body portion between two types of our workers is significant. So this is how we can use Nordic questionnaire and analyze the data. But the basic point is that you have to use it when there is a need to have a gross picture for analysis of musculoskeletal disorders. So you saw that we had a large sample 1020 workers and 1439 workers so this will give you an initial picture of the situation and then you can use some detailed questionnaire or tools to further investigate the situation thank you